Okay, welcome back. Here we're gonna pick right back up question eight. Oop, I, uh, oop, I already got it out of there. And yeah, this is an interesting type of one of these questions in when involving dew point and relative humidity, given readings off of a psychrometer. But uh, what we're told is uh, we are looking for the dew point if the relative humidity is 100% and the air temperature is 20 degrees Celsius. Now the thing is, the air temperature itself, when we're talking about a psychrometer, is going to be measured on the dry bulb. And so, if the air temperature is 20 degrees Celsius, but the relative humidity is 100%, that actually means that we've already met the dew point temperature. And so, there would be a zero degree difference between the air temperature and the uh, wet bulb temperature. And therefore, we would have a 20 degrees Celsius uh, answer. Okay. Uh, now, if that is not your understanding of the, of the phenomenon, then we can use the chart as well. Because we're going down here. We're been given a dry bulb temperature here. We got dry bulb of 20, and we were told the relative humidity was 100%. So when we look over here, we find it in this column, which as you follow it up, that is a zero degree difference between the wet and dry bulb. So once again, if the dry bulb was 20 with a zero degree difference between the two, then you know it's got to be the same. All right, fantastic. Moving on to number nine, uh, we've got here a, uh, we're asked which graph best represents the change in air pressure as temperature increases at Earth's surface. Remember that low pressure itself is, you know, is caused by air that's rising up off of an area, you know, relative to areas where there's colder, more dense air where the air would be sinking, the sinking is actually going to provide the pressure, you know, as it moves down. So we know that hot air, due to its lower density, rises. So as we look at the graphs here, we're looking for the air pressure to decrease as the air temperature increases. So on this one, it would have to be shown with graph 2. All right, number 10. Compared to an area of Earth's surface with gentle slopes, an area with steeper slope most likely has. And looking at the answer choices quickly, we're talking about infiltration, right? the rate at which you know, water is going to be able to sink into the ground. Um, when it looks like runoff is the other option. And remember, if it's running off, that means it didn't sink in. So let's see here. An area with steeper slopes, well, if it's a steeper slope, the, you know, the gradient high, then the water is going to be moving faster. And so you would have less infiltration. So right in a way, we know it's got to be either one or two. Um, and now if there's less infiltration, that means that there's less sinking in, so there would be more that was running off, correct? So, number one here, less infiltration, it's not sinking in, which means there's more runoff, the stuff that doesn't sink in. Fantastic. All right, number 11. Geographic region, most common source region for maritime tropical, the MT air masses that move into New York State. Uh, this maritime, right, over water, tropical meaning warm, and you know, the water is going to come from the Gulf of Mexico, and we know it's a tropical region in those parts, so there's your warm, moist air mass. Which weather variable most likely decreases uh, ahead of an up approaching storm system? Okay, which weather variable most would most likely decrease ahead of an approaching storm system? Okay, well, this is, you know, again, when we think about storms, we're thinking about, you know, we always use the recipe for rain. And the rising, expanding, cooling, and pre, you know, to produce the precipitation. So the rising air is what we associate with air pressure that would be lowering. So and low pressure is what brings these storms in. There we go. Lowering air pressure is, means we must have a storm approach. Okay. Scroll all up. Number thirteen. Uh, which gas in the Earth's upper atmosphere is beneficial to humans because it absorbs large amounts of ultraviolet radiation. Okay, so uh, we have water vapor as a choice, methane, and nitrogen, and ozone. So, if this is uh, you know this is largely when we talk about the danger in the past from chlorofluorocarbons and the depletion of the ozone layer, the major problem with that is that the ozone is what actually soaks up and absorbs that ultraviolet radiation keeping us relatively protected. So, ozone would be the answer there. Uh, number 14. Which combination of climatic factors generally results in the coldest temperatures? Okay, so cold temperatures, we want 
generally speaking, higher elevations, we know in examining estrogen, higher elevations are going to have colder temperatures as long as you're in the troposphere. So, and then we're talking about low latitudes. Well, a lower latitude is closer to the you know, equator, where it is warm, a warm climate, whereas a higher latitude would be closer to the poles. So this is what we're looking for here. You know, high elevations, definitely going to be cold. And the higher latitudes, closer to the poles, absolutely cold. Fifteen. We got cross sections below. So the surface bedrock in two different locations, twenty miles apart. Rock layers are labeled one, two, three, four, and X. Rock layers have not been overturned. Okay, great. And we're looking at all these layers relative to each other's locations. We got layer X at the location at location B is most likely the same relative age as which rock layer at location A. So we want to do some uh correlation of rock strata here and try to match up where we might uh, be seeing some patterns. All right, so um, this one here, if we are we looking, uh, hmm, maybe take this, this, these two, all right, if those two were together, then we would have sandstone and then a layer of limestone. On top, and that is the correct secrets one, two, three above this area. So let's check out what's below. We have got film, okay. Oop, I kind of missed the <laughs> spot there. <coughs> Excuse me, just a pair. Okay, there we go. Okay, that works. Now this would work, and if we get in here, just like that. Oh, look at that! I mean, that looks pretty. That looks pretty good. We've got a very good sequence in here. Uh, you know, we could even continue that, you know, all the way on down here. So it looks like we we relatively matched it, which means that X is matching up with layer three here on this side. And if we grab our little smiley face, we can give it to number three. All right, so a little review here again, in case that was lost with my mistake that I had to erase. Uh, but essentially, just look for a correlation, you know, jumping side to side, matching the patterns. And it looks like once we've got them all in a row, we're saying X here, again, would be in line with number three. All right, last one on this page here. We've got New York State. The risk of sunburn is greatest between 11 and 3 p.m. on summer days because, well, you know, these times, you know, during the day. Oop, I thought that my red line. Between those times of the day, uh, we generally expect the sun to be higher in the sky, and therefore, you know, the angle of insulation would be, you know, high, giving us focused beams of light. And there we go. Page two is done. Save this one. Move on to page three.